Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, after two weeks on the road, we're really excited to be back home. Uh, we've had, uh, there's been a lot of excitement from our fans and uh, great support and, uh, you know, uh, uh, about everything uh, that's been over the past couple of weeks. But now it, uh, uh, we're really excited just to get back home and get back in front of our fans. And we need everybody out there to make sure that they come out and support us against a very good Louisiana Tech team. Uh, uh, Skip does a great job, and I think they're uh, very solid on all three phases. Uh, earlier this year, we uh, I think we set an attendance record for our SMU game, and uh, now we got to do that again. I challenge all our fans to come out and let's let's reset another record and let's make sure we show up just like I challenge our players. Let's be the most excited team to play, and uh, let's make uh, make sure Apache's rocking and rolling, and we're the make, most excited group out there. And uh, let's uh, make it to our advantage. So uh, we're really looking forward to that support. The only thing we've really accomplished up to this point is learning how each and every week to prepare the right way for one opponent. We've maximized our days, our abilities, uh, one day at a time, one week at a time. And uh, through all that preparation, we've kind of built it up through the week to be the most excited team to play. And because of that, I feel like we've built a solid foundation uh, heading into conference play. Uh, right now, uh, this Saturday, uh, it's a whole entirely new season. Everybody is 0-0. It really doesn't matter what you've done in non-conference play. Uh, non-conference play is more or less just to kind of see where you stack up as a team, uh, how good you are as a team. And then uh, the games that truly matter are the ones that are fixed to be played within, uh, within our conference play. And with that, I'll open it up. Louisiana Tech obviously gave you all you all could handle last year. What have you seen from them so far this year, just in their first three games? Of uh, really solid on all three phases. I think uh, offensively, uh, they're, they're putting up a lot of yards and points. Defensively, they're, they're very physical. They're going to be in your face. They're going to press up their corners. They're going to play you man. They're going to force you to make competitive plays. And, uh, and all their special teams are, again, uh, really solid. I think, uh, you know, I think they're healthy this year. I think they had uh, this past season, they had some uh, bad luck with a lot of different injuries uh, that put a lot of people out. Uh, and so their depth uh, may have got a little down at times. But they're playing at a high level. There's no doubt in my mind they're, they're uh, one of the top teams in this conference, and they're well coached. They gave LSU, they hung around with LSU last week for a little bit. What did you see from that performance just in the little bit that you've been able to see? So Very far? competitive. Uh, you can see they, they play extremely hard, um, have a lot of experience. And, uh, you know, even when things, you know, you, you look at certain teams on tape, uh, you know, when things aren't going well, how do they respond as a team? How do they respond on uh, different sides of the ball? And I thought uh, they continued to fight through it as a group. And, um, you know, they, they played well. And again, they, they played hard the entire four quarters. And because of that, uh, you know, gave them an opportunity. And so there's no doubt in my mind they'll be uh, coming here excited. And, uh, you know, again, it's conference play. It's the first one to open up conference. It's an important game for everyone. Uh, and so I know that uh, we'll, we'll get their best this weekend. The run game kind of got going for y'all a little bit against Liberty. That has been something y'all focused on going up to that point. Kind of what's the confidence level now that the run game has shown that they need more confidence? Yeah, more confidence. Uh, you know, that's something we really needed to, especially the type of game it was. Uh, you know, the second and third quarter were very challenging uh, for us, uh, you know, because of the, not only was it raining, but uh, there was a lot of wind in there. And uh, because of that, you know, we knew we were going to have to play really good football in all three phases together. Um, and, uh, you know, I was proud of our O-line, the way they stepped up, and, and our running backs, our receivers had to buy in because of what they were doing defensively, having to dig out safeties and make sure we were physical. And, uh, you know, they, they bought into, you know, taking over and being the most physical team, uh, especially after that last rain delay. And uh, I have to give our guys a lot of credit. Through that adversity, they, they continued to stay poised and um, stay excited. Making sure that uh, you know sometimes when those things happen, you can relax a little bit or um, get a little sleepy, I guess. So uh, they did a great job of, of making sure that uh, we, we continue to be the most excited team throughout four quarters. Warren had such a great game. Talk a little bit about the, what he's done for you guys this year. Yeah, he's 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 done some really. I think the last couple games he's been very solid. Uh, again, I, I said kind of Arkansas, his numbers didn't really show what type of game he had. Uh, you know, but he's a he's a, a kid that's really you know gaining more confidence and, and getting more comfortable each week. Uh, you know, I thought he he's been playing physical. He's breaking tackles, running through things. Is uh, you know I think he's he's seeing it well. Again, we just got to continue to uh, develop that group and, and keep growing. Uh, 
you know, you, anytime a, a running back rushes for 170 something yards, you also have to give a lot of credit to, to the offensive line and the things they did up front. It takes everybody. And this is what we talk about. You know, when, when that run game gets going, uh, those receivers, you know, you have to be physical and you have to, you know, sell out for your teammates in order for them to have success. Because when they're having success, the more success they're having, uh, the easier it is going to get for those guys as well. And just buying into that, you know, as soon as those safeties start fitting and fitting and, you know, and then that play action becomes to where that receiver's wide open downfield with no one around them. There's a reason for that. And so it takes an entire group effort. And, uh, you know, I think they're starting to understand, um, you know, that overall at, at every position. And so, uh, but, but I think uh, he's, he's done a great job. Did he grow through that redshirt year after you transferred from SFA? Did you see him improve over that time? Yeah, when he came here, he was injured. And so he had to fight some of the injury bug and, and making sure that, uh, you know, he had, he had had surgery, so we had to make sure we, we got everything right before we could get back out and on the field. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a slow transition once you get back in, learning the offense. You know, you're on scout teams and uh, trying to give good looks to uh, the other side of the ball. And I think this spring was the key for him. I thought he had a really solid spring. Uh, worked really hard at, again, just getting comfortable within the system. And, and Coach Choice, again, he does a great job with those guys, all of those guys. So it's a great group. They they root for each other. They they compete hard against each other. At the same time, they they uh, they coach each other up. It, it's a great room. Uh, and so I think uh, it's been a good transition for him. He's uh, again, I think he's getting more comfortable and doing some good things. Before the season starts, when you guys lay out the goals that you have for the year, um, whether it's a bowl win or whatever, does an undefeated season ever come up? No, it really doesn't. You know, I think if again, it goes back to. What we've said since day one, I mean, the first and foremost thing that we we got to make sure is correct is our character. And uh, you've heard me say it. I want to make sure we're selfless, tough, and disciplined. Uh, that's who we are as a football team. And if you prepare the right way each and every day and you maximize your opportunities, uh, and, you, and if you learn how to do that uh, versus one opponent, uh, one week at a time, I think the results take care of itself. I think, you know, for any, any teams I've had success on, you know, I, I think that's teams that we won national championships on. Go 13 and 0. I think it's just we, it's a weekly process, and um, once once the season's over, you can kind of look back and see where that took us. But again, we have a long season ahead of us. We we have uh, there's Conference USA is top to bottom a, a, a tough conference. Uh, there's a lot of great coaches. There's a lot of great players. Every week's going to be a dogfight. And so, you know, it's going to be very challenging for us. All we can do is focus in on one game at a time. So if you don't, uh, you're going to get beat pretty quick. Like you said, you, you've been through this as a player as far as having this kind of success. Do you, and now you're doing it as a coach, do, do you feel a pr the pressure mounting or, or are you able to just kind of isolate that? To me, great teams, uh, it's not so much, you have pressure every week. If you're, if you're, to me, if you're handling it the right way, and if you, through your humility and, and you're humble enough to look at every opponent and understand that there's, you're that far off uh, each and every game to either winning or losing. I mean, you've seen it throughout the course of a game. When you lose just a little bit of focus, how quickly it can turn, how many points they can put up, or uh, how quickly your offense starts going three and out. And it just a, a little bit of lack of focus. Uh, fortunately, we've uh, you know, been pretty solid throughout four quarters, uh, but I think you have to, I mean, once you, you always feel that pressure every week that if you don't prepare the right way, you're going to get beat. And as a, as a player, it doesn't matter whether what's ahead, it, you don't want to lose. Uh, no one wants to lose. No one got, I mean, we're all competitive. And so, you know, I think, I think our team understands that any, any opponent on our schedule is more than, uh, more than capable of beating us. Uh, but at the same time, they're also confident enough to know that we prepare the right way. We feel, we feel good that we can also uh, beat anybody. Whether it was preparing for a big opponent or responding to a big win, starting the season, whatever it was, do you feel like you, you really maximized and saw everything that you, could, you wanted to see before conference play starts from your team? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, and it wasn't all great. Sometimes it's maximize your ability in the, in the film room of correcting your mistakes. Uh, how, how does that transition over to Saturday or, or into practice on not making the same mistake? Uh, you know, and different parts of the game, different situations. How are you learning? How are you growing? We've seen a lot of different things um, so far. And 
again, uh, we'll see. But I, I feel good about, again, the foundation we've built uh, through fall camp, through the first four games. But now again, it's it's a whole new it's a whole new season, and we got a very challenging game ahead of us. I know again, uh, we have a lot of respect for uh, our opponent this week for sure, and, and know that uh, we need everybody's support in our stadium to uh, you know make sure we're successful this weekend together. Coach, have you heard any talk about the year 1959 this week? No. That was the last time North Texas has been five and zero. Any. Donors, uh, is, there, is there a donor who uh, was on that team? Anybody reached out to you at all? Like just I don't care when it was, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, and that's, with all due respect, I, I really don't care uh, because 5-0 uh, and o is, if you prepare the right way and, and you go in and, and, and we play uh, up to our abilities, that'll take care of itself. And again, I think anything that's been done uh, or any record that's been set, uh, whether it's an apogee or with this football team, offense, defense, you, we can enjoy that in January. And I think, uh, and those are the times to enjoy it in the off season. So to me, it really doesn't matter at this point. Does it just feel like a special season so far or do you not even let yourself go there? What's any thoughts about that? Again, we, we have a lot of football games to be played and so, if you start thinking about this is already a special season, you can just as easily go what four and four and nine. That wouldn't be such a special season to me. And uh, it's about the big picture to me. I, I just think the more you start thinking about those things, uh, the more distracted. It's, it's the distraction thing we talked about. I, I've been proud of our team, uh, especially this past week after Arkansas. You have the punt return going viral and. There's been more media around. I mean, last week there was 15 kids sitting out here uh, and that people wanted to interview. And like we talked about, I thought they handled it very well. They were mature. Uh, they didn't let the distractions, uh, you know, carry over into their preparation. Uh, like I said, they didn't drink the Kool-Aid. Because um, once you do it, and it, and it and it only takes a couple guys. It doesn't have to even be maybe the entire team is focused, but it only takes two or three guys to lose focus or get big headed or anything else to where <laughs> you're going to get beat. Kyrie Muhammad has gotten off to a good start this year at safety. What have you seen from him, him and his growth that he's had from last year to this year, the second year starting? Yeah, he, he's really matured, uh, and I think part of that's just kind of growing up through uh, maturing through the, the program and through the system. Uh, I thought he played phenomenal the other night. They were uh, doing a lot of different things with their receivers as well, push cracking, and um, he was having to get off blocks and get downhill and be physical, especially in the run game. And so uh, I, I think he's, he's really grown. and. Not only as a player, but I think as a teammate, um, as, as a you know, developing his his leadership ability, um, learning how to uh, sometimes just work, just do your job. Uh, there's a lot of things, and all of us have to do it as coaches, as players. And I've been really proud of the way he's uh, he's been developing, and I know he continues to understand that he still has a lot of work to do in order to get this team to where we need to be. What does it look like for your team to reset? We come in here, again, we're going to enjoy every win. And I, I refuse, I don't care, uh, one point, uh, whatever the case is, every, every week's different. Um, you know, first thing we do is come in that locker room and we have a good time. Uh, we're going to enjoy it. And we're going to enjoy it that night on the plane, on the way home, uh, whether we're traveling or, or we want to hang out. I think it's so important that you can't get on a roll and forget and take it for granted that winning is challenging. And if you got to do the right things and put in all the hard work that goes into that week, uh, it takes everybody. And I think you have to be able to enjoy that process and enjoy those victories because, again, they're hard to come by. Just ask anybody in the country who lost this week. But at the same time, we come in here Sunday and once, you know, we, we get our, our, our film corrected and uh, like I said, some of those learning experiences that we have to, you know, look in the mirror and, and uh, understand where we need to improve uh, overall as a team, as an individual. And then once we make those corrections and we get back out uh, on field on, that, on the field on Sunday night, that's the reset button. 
and now it's more about let's let's correct our mistakes let's get out there and make sure we start the week of preparation off against this opponent the right way and it builds throughout the week and at the end of the week what we talk about is building to be the most excited team to play and so far as of in the fourth quarter of the night after the, any of the rain delays or anything else they were still uh, jumping around excited uh, rooting for each other high-fiving I mean it was uh, they did a great job and so that, that's that's what's helped us become be successful and as soon as you lose sight and focus on the things that uh, help you win football games, that's when you usually, again, get beat. So. There have been so many, whether it be high school or college games, last month affected by lightning. Mm -hmm. You all had the one at Liberty. What are the challenges as a coaching staff and for your players to have to not only reset from week to week, mm -hmm. but from quarter to quarter potentially? in a situation like that? Yeah, it's very challenging just because uh, it's very easy to get relaxed. Uh, again, the focus aspect on, it gets frustrating to have to sit in a locker room, uh, especially on the road. It's even more challenging on the road because uh, it's not an environment you're you really as comfortable in. It's usually a little bit more cramped up, uh, a little tighter spaces, you know, it can, it can get annoying. And so you, you gotta be mentally tough in the butt. That's what we talk about. I mean, we're selfless, tough, and discipline. Mental toughness is one of our core values that uh, we can sit and talk about being selfless, tough, and disciplined. Uh, and all three of those sound very easy when, you, when it comes out of your mouth. But every single day, truly having to work on those, uh, making mistakes within those uh, core values. And um, I think they're doing a great job. They were great. They did a great job being mentally tough. You were seeing what going on this weekend with Ian Bailing and the Green Statue breaking the ground on the indoor facility. Are you, are you and your guys just excited to be here and a part of that progress in the program? Like that? Well, first off, uh, that, that it's an, that's an awesome uh, it's awesome for uh, Joe that uh, that statue's being unveiled, long time coming. Uh, probably one of the all time greats. Not probably is one of the all time greats. Great ambassador of our program and. Uh, you know, we're very blessed that, uh, you know, the things he does around our program and for our program. And so, uh, again, I'm very excited for that, for our fans. It'll be very exciting. But the only thing we can focus in on <laughs> is Louisiana Tech. Uh, as, as great as all of that is, um, if we're not focused in on, on them, uh, it's going to be a long Saturday. That indoor facility, long term, does that how will that help your guys' program to have that influence? Well, again, we've talked about that a number of times. I think for a number of different reasons from, again, we, we talk about and Ren does such an unbelievable job of making sure that our, uh, all of our student athletes are given the resources necessary to be successful. And that's just continuing to uh, give them different resources, whether it's in nutrition, whether it's uh, within academics, uh, indoor, I mean, um, for and then indoor for a number of different reasons, whether it's weather, whether it's lightning strikes, having to come off the field and wait, just like in a game, wait 30 minutes for each strike. Uh, the longer you're waiting around for each strike, uh, the, the, the less time you're going to have away from football and uh, it's going to strain you academically at night. Uh, there's a lot of things that go into it. And then, too, recruiting. It also helps with them recruiting facilities, understanding when you come here, you're going to have. Uh, you're going to be great on nutrition. You're going to be great uh, with the training room, uh, academics, everything that you need to be successful, uh, we have right here. So you got to give a lot of credit to our president, our athletic director, and, uh, and, and our donors. I mean, they've made, as you've seen, huge sacrifices in order for our, uh, our men, to, men and women to be successful. You received them for uh, how well did they exemplify selflessness, toughness? Yeah, I think they they have just turned on the tape the other night. They were having to do some things that a lot of receivers don't enjoy doing. <laughs> um, and that is you're going to have to get involved in the run game with how certain teams are going to play, especially at nights like that. Um, they're going to hunker down in there, and, and you're going to have to go be physical. And they did that. Again, we, we stress that. We pride ourselves on being a tough football team and being a physical group. Again, we're growing as the season goes. Uh, they've gotten better. 
I think we've gotten better every week uh, on, on all aspects of our games. You just look at um, not only offensively, but look at our defense. It's a, a defense that has really matured a lot uh, over the past year. I mean, I think they're in the top 20 of every defensive stat in, in the country. Uh, you look at our, uh, I think they're in the top one or two or three in, in, in turnovers and in interceptions, maybe one. Number one, you know, offensively, we've learned how to, so far in the first four games, take care of the football. So, again, just continuing to understand the game of football, what needs to be accomplished throughout the week in order to have that success. And look, just because you prepare the right way, just because you build it up to be the most excited team to play, that doesn't guarantee you a victory either. You got to go out there and make pl routine plays. You got to go out there and make sure that uh, you're a physical group. And there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, again, that's why we enjoy every victory because winning is challenging. Like I'm sorry, I missed up. Uh, last year, you guys were like kind of the underdog heading into conference. So how does it feel? That, how does it feel this year going undefeated and knowing that every team is looking at a chance to beat you guys? Undefeated what? In non-conference? No, undefeated heading into this year. Just like as far as the team, as far as what other teams have seen, you guys uh, latest team success. Well, again, uh, I, I've said it since day one. No, we're not sneaking up on anybody. I, I feel. This past season, uh, you know, through our success through conference, you know, I think we won seven conference games. Uh, we had two losses. A lot of those games were dogfights. Uh, we've had to, we had to come back in the fourth quarter to win most of those games. So every every opponent uh, on our schedule understands that they were that close uh, to winning those games. I can promise you they're going to have a chip on their shoulder and they're going to believe when they come here or we go on the road that they're going to be able to beat us. And so we're going to get everybody's, everyone's best. At the end of the day, that, none of that really matters. As long, again, I'm really focused in on uh, our football team, how we prepare. And if we do it the right way, I think things take care of themselves. And then it goes down to who makes the plays on Saturdays. And it's not always perfect. But uh, all I can, all, all we can do is focus in on our jobs. Do you have a, a first memory of Joe Green, me, Joe Green? Well, obviously the, the commercial. Right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. The commercial is probably, you know, uh, everybody's. Or it was mine. You the first four games? Uh, yeah, appreciate that. I, I'm, I feel like I'm getting older. I know that. <laughs> every, every week I get a... Maybe a year older. Coach, through the first four games, Mason Fine has been uh, earned multiple honors. What kind of work have you seen this guy put in this season so far? Put in a ton of work. And to be honest with you, I, I, you could ask Mason, but I would probably venture to say he doesn't really care about the honors right now. Uh, and that's just who he is, the type of man he is, the type of person, the way he was raised. Uh, he's very competitive, and he's worked extremely hard in the offseason. Uh, again, he. We didn't finish like we wanted to finish this past season. And there was a, a chip on a, with our entire team on everybody max, max, making sure they maximize their abilities um, to help this team be more successful. And there was no one who uh, did a better job than him in the film room, in the weight room, with his nutrition, uh, on the field, off the field. He's an unbelievable teammate. And, uh, and again, Just like all of us, he's not perfect either. We all we all need to improvements everywhere uh, in our daily lives, and so. But he understands that, and that's what makes him special. I, I just think that he's always working to be better on and off the field. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Coach.